All right, so we are back. This is the second cipher, second work break session of the second cipher. All right, so all right, so we didn't have any show and tell stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk about something that I thought was pretty cool. And uh, from what I understand of it, I'm going to just talk about it. So if anyone is familiar with it, then please uh, let me know more about it. But we're going to talk about sanitiz sanitizing, sanitization. Yes. Yay. All right. Cool. So let me uh, share my screen here. So now, as a developer, uh, two things that I've learned as my time as a developer is never push uh, to production on a Friday and also never let your users just put whatever they want, like in your website, like in different like uh, elements or what have you. And so, because like the worst thing I think you can do and you're just asking for your site to be hacked is to put like any, any element dot like inner.html, whatever a user wants to put in there. So you're, you're, cause you're just opening yourself up for all sorts of cross scripting errors and things. So, uh, because if you do that, uh, then people will be able to run all sorts of like programs and JavaScript on your website. So if you, is there anything you don't take from this, never allow users to determine uh, whatever, to put whatever they want into your website without you cleaning it up first, you know, making sure everything looks fine. And so with that comes the sanitizer API. And uh, so it's a new API in the browsers. I think, I believe it's like Chrome 93 or something, but it's cool that something is coming to the browser to help with that. You know what I mean? So just to make sure. Uh, so yeah, so as you can see here, shouts to uh, Jack J over at, I don't know, whoever, they wrote the article for web.dev. And so, which reminds me, let me, I'm going to uh, add the link to this article, to the site, to the archive page of the video. So that way you can uh, check it out as well. So, yeah. So when you go to the archive of this video, you'll be able to see uh, the links of the things that we discussed today. So now, all right, so, uh, I'm not all right. So now the new sanitizer API aims to build a robust processor for arbitrary strings to be safely inserted into a page. Because again, one thing to remember, never let the user just put whatever they want on the page without you taking a look at it first. All right, so this is a fairly new one. So uh, yeah, so it's updated October 7th. So just a few days ago and uh, so yeah, so it says applications deal with untrusted strings all the time, but safely rendering that content as part of an HTML document can be tricky. So yeah, so like I think they said in here, uh, never, uh, well, they said, okay, so here's a cross scripting, uh, cross site scripting. So yeah, you don't want to do that uh, because it'll not only affect like your site, but like other users, you know what I mean? Like, so you don't want people just to be able to put whatever they want on your site. Uh, so now this is something I've never seen before. It's like set HTML. Has anyone ever, I know about inner HTML, like inner text, text content, but like set HTML, I've never seen that one before. So that's, that's new to me. Uh, but yeah, so if you wanted to, let's say this is the, um, hello world, you know, italicize with an image source, but then see the error is this on error is going to pop up uh, an alert that says zero. And so that's weird that it's in this image tag. You know what I mean? So people will be able to pass all sorts of things into your website if you just did, right? Oh, that's right here. Oh, stop doing that. Dot inner HTML. See, yeah, we don't want to do that. So like if, if a user was just putting this, I've seen this in some chat rooms, like that's super important, especially like chat rooms. You want to really, it's funny, I think I saw on Twitch, this guy was working on something and he forgot to, uh, uh, to like escape, you know what I'm saying? And sanitize the stuff people were putting in the chat. And so you had people doing all sorts of things like 
you know, putting like emojis and stuff and doing marquee tags and all stuff. But one person actually made like the UI like flip 180 degrees. So like everything was upside down. You know what I mean? Like, so don't let people have, you know, free reign or stuff. So, so yeah, so this is talking about escaping user uh, input. Now the thing is, when you try to like escape, so that's basically trying to sanitize it. Like if you try to do some stuff, then it will uh, like this EM, I think they mentioned it here. Yeah, so like if you do text content, what it'll do is, cause that's a, a way around it as well. But if you do like text content, then I think you will get like, you know, like the, the uh, they, not ASCII, but like the, the entities, the HTML entities for like left colon, not left colon, uh, left bracket, right bracket. So it'll look something like, so like if you had like an ampersand or what, like a, a copyright symbol, it would have like the ampersand copy colon. You know, uh, if you, okay, so like the left, um, the left tag or what have you, it would be like ampersand LT, then EM, ampersand G and GT kind of thing. You know what I mean? And then if there's quotes, so if you were to do like text content, I think that's what would happen. So that's, but you don't want that to happen because you want it to actually look italicized or what have you, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, so yeah, so like I said, the best thing to do here is not escaping because when you escape those characters, that turns them into the ampersand LT stuff. You know, that's what the uh, text content would do. It would get rid of the on error alert zero. Like it would make it so it can't be executed. But it will make the um, the brackets in EM look funny and thus not allowing it to look emphasized or italicized or whatever. And so what you want to do is not escape them, but you want to sanitize them. So that's the difference. And so that's why they have the sanit sanitizer API. Uh, so yes, you want to sanitize. Yeah, because see, you escape them, you get the uh, HTML entities. Uh, oh, by the way, let me, since I mentioned it, going to put this link into, uh, so you can see it later when uh, the video is up, the archive video. All right, cool. So, uh, so yeah, so like right here, so that image on error, this one here, it causes the error handler to be executed. But if the on error handler was removed, it would be possible to safely expand it in the DOM while leaving EM intact, right? So what they're saying is, can't do this. So this .inner HTML is going to run this on error, which is going to cause the alert box to open up, which is what we don't want. But now, if we sanitized it, then we could remove that on error. And so there'd be no problem. So uh, that's that. Uh, let's see. So to sanitize correctly, it is necessary to parse the input string as HTML, omit tags and attributes that are considered harmful, and keep the harmless ones. Cool. And so then they have that. So now here is the actual API and how it work, right? So you have this div, right? This uh, random element that's on your site. And you, you know, you choose the document.query selector div. Then you have the user input, which is that same uh, emphasized hello world with the image with the image tag, the source being blank, but you having that on error. Uh, and it, I think it'll, it'll give you the on error because the source is not, there's nothing in the source. So that'll throw an error, right? And that's why you get like the little block instead of your image sometimes, you get the little square. So that would launch the on error and it would pop up with alert zero on your computer. You don't want that, right? So then you're going to create a new instance of the sanitizer by doing new sanitizer. Cool. And again, with the set HTML, I have never seen that. Is that something new? I don't know. But... So you'll take the div, the element, the, um, the reference to the element. You'll do a set HTML of the user input and the sanitizer. So that looks similar to what we had up, uh, up here. So it's pretty much this. So that same new sanitizer, we just abstracted it into a variable. And we abstracted this whole uh, text string into the uh, user input variable. So it's a little bit you know, cleaner to see. All right, uh, cool. So hopefully that makes sense. And so then what will happen is that, uh, oh, wait, no, keep going, keep going. Cool, so what will happen, what will be set on your uh, in the DOM 
will be just the, a div around. So it'd be the div you're looking for that you have there, right? So, it, so it's kind of like inner HTML, but not. So you have the div, that's your element that you call, that you get a reference to. And then inside of that, you place in this new sanitized uh, part of the text string from the user input. So it strips out the on error. So it automatically just knows to do that, which is cool. Uh, yeah, so that's good. So you don't have to really worry about it. So that's cool. All right. Oh, here we go. So it is worth noting that set HTML is defined on element, being a method of element. So I guess it's a method in there that I wasn't familiar with. Uh, the context to parse is self-explanatory div in this case. The parsing is done once internally, and the result is directly expanded into the DOM. So they fix it, they clean it up, and then they put it into the DOM. All right. Um, so now, if you don't want to expand directly into the DOM, you can also get the result as an HTML element. Okay. So what they're doing here now, so instead of actually doing it directly onto, like putting it into the element, let's say you just want to clean it and get something from there, you can do the same thing, user input sanitizer, but instead of getting a reference to a DOM element, you can just do sanitizer dot sanitizer for, and then you have a div and then the user input. So instead of the reference to the, so, so it's a little bit different from here. Interesting. So I guess this would create the HTML div element then. So I guess you could put whatever you want here. So it could be like a P tag or whatever. And then it would be whatever element. All right, so, okay. Cool, then if you want to get the result of sanitizing of a string, so okay, uh, you can use inner HTML from HTML elements you got here. Okay, so okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, so you get the sanitizer, sanitizer for, so I guess you just get the div here. You don't get the stuff into it, you just get the div. All right, cool. And then you get the div, so the same thing as up here, you get the div, but then you do the dot inner HTML, which then takes the user input and put it into the div that was created, which gives you this. All right, and so there's different ways of doing it. That's cool. And then if you already have a user controlled document fragment, so if you already have something there and you wanna remove only the harmful stuff. Okay, so, all right. So then you have the div and then you replace the children with that there. So, okay, so we'll replace whatever div is there. Okay, interesting, cool. Now, what's also cool is that you can actually uh, customize it. So they have this configuration here. So they have the allow elements, block elements, drop elements, allow attributes, drop attributes, allow custom elements, which is pretty cool. So if you want to have like a web component or don't have a web component, you can set that. So, so if you just want to just strictly, you know, like regular HTML, elements, you could do that. But if you wanted to allow custom elements, so you could strip out like web components if you wanted to. That's cool. And then uh, comments. All right. Oh, I guess if you wanted to, you know, get rid of like comments like these. All right. So the following uh, options specify how the sanitation result. All right. So allow elements, like I said, name of elements that the sanitizer should retain. Block elements is the opposite. Uh, drop elements, names of elements the sanitizer should remove along with their children. Oh, okay. So block elements would keep the children from the elements. So if you had like a P tag and then a span tag, and you just want to get rid of the P tag, you would keep the span tag. But then if you had a P tag and the children uh, of the P tag being span tags, then you could drop the P tags, drop elements, and it'll get rid of the span tags, it looks like. That's cool. So let's say, for example, you have the string here, and then you want to sanitize it, sanitize for div. Then what you'll get is the hello uh, b. So you'd get the same thing, but just wrapped in a div. Now, if you wanted to allow uh, b, and you put that allow elements, the bold tags, then what you get is, uh, okay, so you get everything. Uh, except the, you get everything. No, you don't, you only get the Bs. So you see there's like italicize. You don't get that because it wasn't allowed. So it strips that out. That's cool. 
And if you want to block it, it's the opposite where it got rid of the bees but kept the eyes. Uh, that's cool. And then if you wanted to allow elements but left it blank, then it would take out the um, bees and eyes. That's cool. So it takes out anything that's not there. That's cool. Uh, you can control whether the sanitizer will allow or deny specified attributes with the following options. So yes, yeah, so with the attribute stuff, pretty much the same thing. So for example, you have the ID foo class bar style tag here, right? Uh, so if you wanted to sanitize it, you, it would just leave everything the same. But then if you wanted to allow attributes of style, it would get rid of everything else. So it got rid of the ID, the class, but kept the style. Cool. And if you want to allow the P, same thing, uh, allow the attributes, the P, but there is no P tag. Oh, so then that means it got rid of everything in the span because there was no P. Huh. All right. Cool. And then you allow the style star. Oh, so you can even get down into what you want to show or don't show inside of the style. Interesting. So this is allowing everything in the style to be shown. Oh, that's cool. So if you wanted to just, let's say if you have like color and then you like background color. So if you just put color here, maybe you would strip out the background color. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, so then you could drop attributes. So like the ID, which was, uh, what was it? Foo. It would, uh, if you drop the attributes, it gets rid of it. So it's no longer ID foo here. And then allow attributes. If you left it blank, like the last one, it gets rid of all attributes. Interesting. And even got rid of the span. Okay. Cool. And then here's the custom elements, like we're saying, like custom elements. So if you like had like a web, a web component or whatever uh, su surrounding it, if you did it uh, sanitized for div, it just gets rid of it. Interesting. But then if you allow it, and so, oh, so you can allow custom elements, true. And then I guess you have to say allow elements, which ones you want. So it would be the div and the custom elements. And then it will allow you to keep the divs and the custom elements. That's cool. So like they're saying here, the sanitized API is designed to be safe by default. So if you try to do like allow elements script, it, that won't work. It'll actually strip out the, the scripts, strip out the scripts. And then uh, they're talking about this other one. Like there's another library called Dom Purify, which is this one here. I'm gonna add that to the list of links to the video. You can check that out. Uh, so that is another one that you could do. So they're uh, so basically they're taking what that library can do and putting it into the browser like natively, which is cool. So so Dom Purify can serve as a fallback when the sanitizer API is not imp into implemented into the browser. Because again, I don't think this is fully in the browser yet, at least not multiple browsers, uh, manufacturers or what have you. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, so that's pretty much uh, everything as, as far as I know with the, uh, so yeah, so you can see it's a Chrome origin trial ready for trial, but the launch hasn't started yet. So there's something that's cool that's coming to the browsers. I think it said that, oh yeah, so this is how you can enable it, which is cool. And then Firefox also implements the sanitizer API as an experimental feature. So you could do that. So it looks like Chrome and Firefox. I'm not sure about anyone else yet though, but you can see here it was tagged for Chrome 93. And I think we're like Chrome 90, I'm not sure. Or maybe 92, so it might be the next one. Uh, but yeah, so it's something to kind of look out for. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so let me stop sharing my screen and get you all back to work. Uh, yes, stop screen share. All right, so what do y'all think? Uh, the sanitizer API, seems pretty cool. And it's something that's like very needed for like a safer, because you know, people forget sometimes and things, you know? And so we don't wanna have any sort of catastrophic errors just because somebody accidentally forgot something. And so, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so again, let me know what y'all think. Uh, have you, well, if you've used it, like if you uh, set all the flags and stuff, what do you think? If you're watching this in the future and it's already been implemented in the browser, what do you think? So uh, yeah, let me know. Always interested. All right, I'm just trying to make sure I don't click anything where I mess stuff up. All right, so uh, I'm going to get you all back to work. I'm going to send you off with some tunes. Uh, this is Nujibez, one of my favorite producers. 
uh, featuring Apani B. Uh, the track is called Thank You. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. So, some screen. Uh, and then we'll be back 15 minutes after the hour for the final uh, break session. And then we'll, uh, if we don't have any show and tells, we'll go over an artist's website and you'll listen to some tunes. All right, cool. Thank you all for hanging out. Oh, I almost forgot to uh, do this thing here. And uh, I think that is it. Thank you all once again for hanging out. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yes. All right, see you all later. Let me start from the heart, I just want to stay, I think all the show would love to me. I appreciate this unique opportunity, I'm gonna rock so hard you never stop supporting me. I'm gonna show you how music is more meaning to life. I think all the show would love to me, I appreciate this unique opportunity. I'm gonna rock so hard you never stop supporting me. I'm gonna show you how music is more meaning to life. But let me start from the heart, I just want to stay, I think all the show would love to me. I appreciate this unique opportunity, I'm gonna rock so hard you never stop supporting me. I'm gonna show you how music is more meaning to life. I think.